Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. With your host, Lee Martin, and co-host, Florence Myers McSwine. Good morning and welcome to this week's National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana. It's an honor to be in your homes today as we have a very interesting guest today on the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana. I'm your co-host Florence Myers McSwine here with your host Mr. Lee Martin. Well Florence I just want to say it is a pleasure here uh, to be here today and we do have a very interesting guest today all the way from Florida. And you guys will be consumed with her reality as she has a lot to share. And she is a stable with the National Federation of the Blind for 30 years or more. And it is just an honor and a pleasure uh, to be here with our guests. And I just want to say, Miss Marilyn Baldwin, we just want to thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Lee and Florence. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So Florence, you want to start out talking about uh, the magazine portion of the National Federation of the Blind and the devices that we use. Sure. Um, now, as far as I'm going to first talk about some of the devices that we use. For instance, I use an iPhone and I, I download the app and I access NFB Newsline that way. And a lot of people have an Android. Um, they have the landline phones, the computer, the digital player from the Talking Book and Braille Library, Victor Reader Stream, and the Alexa. So those are ways we access this free auto information service. Um, the service is available for individuals that are blind, print challenged, and those with certain forms of dyslexia, and also the deaf blind can now access this service. So any print challenge individual uh, can gain access to this free audio information service. Now, how do you do that? You can go to our website and it is on the screen and is also spoken. So you can visit our website or you can give us a call uh, at our office and we can get you signed up for this service. And we will also uh, call you and demonstrate with you and get you started so that you can actively use the service uh, from day one. So we're going to take a short pause, but we're going to hear from Miss Marilyn Baldwin um, about the National Federation of the Blind Newsline. Thank you, Lee. I learned about Newsline when it first began probably 20 years ago in Florida. And our the voice of the news line in Florida is Russ Davis. He is our uh, promoter. And I just encourage anyone who is blind or has dyslexia, take the opportunity to learn about Newsline, to become enrolled because it's a wonderful thing to be able to still keep up with the news and our um, magazines that we're used to using, particularly if you lost your vision later in life. You can still enjoy reading your daily newspaper and all of these wonderful magazines, because in order to stay up with what's happening in our world and our community, literacy through Newsline is one of the ways that that is made possible. And I really want to commend um, Lee Martin and the NFB of Indiana for the work that you've done in securing your funding in order that persons who are blind will be able to continue to use the Newsline services. Well, thank you so very much. And uh, I tell you, it's, 
it's a lot of work for a lot of people here in the Indiana affiliate that helps get this thing going and keep it going. And I really do appreciate all the team that we have. So we're going to take a short pause and we'll be right back with our guest today so you can learn about her reality and what she has to share with you. You won't want to miss it. With my failing eyesight, I'm not able to read regular newspapers and I'm not able to keep up with obituaries. I've been a homemaker all of my life, but since my vision has failed, I wish I could read my favorite magazine. Have you heard of the MFB Newsline? Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. I am a blind vendor, and one of the things that I truly miss is reading Vending Times magazine. Hoosiers can hear Indiana magazines, circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. It is a fantastic service. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. segment of the National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. And we're speaking today to Ms. Marilyn Baldwin from the Sunshine State of Florida. So Marilyn, again, welcome to our show. And tell us, if you would, a little about you. Thank you, Florence. I was born in 1958 in a little city called Bainbridge, Georgia. And when I was born, I was diagnosed with congenital cataracts and nystagmus. I had eye surgery on both eyes to remove the cataracts, but it, at that time, the surgery wasn't as advanced as it is now. So I was still left with um, being legally blind in both eyes. We, I was fortunate that my mom was a nurse, so she was able to find out about services and programs for the blind. There was a school in Georgia for students who were blind, but this was back in the days, you know, before we were totally integrated. And when they came for the in-person interview, we never heard from them again. So my dad was a farmer and we moved from Georgia to Florida and that opened up a whole nother world for me because um, I was able to attend a school initially for children who were um, disabled, they had various disabilities. And then I transitioned into third grade to a regular public school. It was called Princeton Elementary School. And there we had a resource room for persons who were blind and vision impaired. And back in those days, the thought was, if you had any vision, you didn't learn Braille, you learned to, you read large print, no matter how cumbersome the books were, no matter if you were holding the book two inches from your nose, that is still what was done. So I spent from third grade to sixth grade in Princeton Elementary, and then I spent one year at a public middle school and went to the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind in St. Augustine, um, our oldest city. And that was very good because before then, I had no contact with other children in the neighborhood other than playtime. And sometimes kids could be very cruel because of your blindness, the way your eyes moved or how you help, held your, whatever. That's just the way that was. So it was wonderful to go to school with other students who had visual disabilities. I graduated from FSDB in 1977 and then 
um, attended Bethune Cookman College, now Bethune Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida. I was the first student with uh, a disability with blindness to attend BCC. I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education and minored in specific learning disabilities. And this was back in the day before we had the technology that we do now. So my studies were done using readers, live in-person readers and materials on tape. And um, the students who were working with me through work study, they would often read or write the notes that were on the blackboard. And also when it was time to take an exam, another student would read the exam and sometimes even the college professor. And um, I was blessed in that I learned in elementary and high school how to listen and take good notes. Even the sighted students wanted my notes because they weren't as in tune to listening. They, their notes mainly came from what was on the board and what they remembered from the um, chapters that they had read before. Well, so you, you've had um, quite a journey there uh, in your life and time uh, as you uh, strongly depicted uh, how it is to be a blind student and um, a blind family member. Now, were, was your family, uh, were you, how, did your family just kind of uh, watch over you and uh, uh, just wouldn't let you participate in a lot of different activities or did they kind of shelter you in any kind of way or, or were you just um, one of those children that just was out and doing everything? It was a little of both. Um, I had chores just like my other sisters. I have two other siblings. And um, so we all had our equal chores. I, um, I made the decision to go to the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. And oh, my mom cried. She didn't want me to go. But she knew if there was any opportunity for me to learn and to excel at that time, it was going to be at the school. Not only did I want um, the opportunity to in, let me go back. When I attended regular public school here, we arrived at the school usually after maybe a two hour bus ride after school would begin. And then in order to get back home, we would leave the classroom an hour before everyone else. So there were some gaps in what I was learning. So that was really something that helped. Also, just the skills of daily living, I think those were enhanced when I went to the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. And we came home on the weekend, so I still had um, a life with my parents. I think my dad was probably the most difficult person to network with, not network with, bond with, because I was their firstborn and this isn't something a family expects, you know, to have a blind child. Um, but now our relationship is much better. I can remember we took a family vacation together when I graduated from college. And my younger sister was just learning to really, really accept that this blindness thing wasn't going to go anywhere. And I can remember that we, um, walk together with the cane, with, my, with me using my white cane. And that was something that initially she was a little uncomfortable with. Now we go anywhere with my cane or any other um, uh, assistive uh, devices that I need. Okay, hey, Marilyn, now at what age did you accept your cane? You know, that probably would have been 
when I was 18, when I really needed to use it at college, that was an eye opener because otherwise, I, you know, obviously if we don't use our cane, we're going to trip, we're going to fall, and we're not going to have that independence. So I would say when I went away to college, we weren't taught mobility in um, public schools. We were only taught to travel within the school building, but outside travel, no. And I believe that has changed now. They do offer mobility and cane travel skills to our younger students. Well, so with all of this, you um, decided to go to college and you decided to go to an HBCU um, college. Uh, what determined that for you? Bethune-Cookman University was not very far from our house. It was maybe an hour away. And I was intrigued by the thought of going to an HBCU because that was an experience I had never had before. Princeton Elementary was a school that was predominantly white. So was the middle school. Um, FSDB was mixed, but there was no black history in those studies. And so I knew that if I went to Bethune-Cookman University, I was going to learn about the rich history and heritage of being African-American. And the school did not disappoint. We had a black history um, course. Everyone took it once for a semester before you graduated. We read the classics. I learned about W.E. Du Bois. And of course, you couldn't go to Bethune-Cookman College and not learn about Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh, and we were exposed to many young Black professionals. And that allowed me to know that even if I was a person who was blind, there were African-American men and women who were successfully living out their lives. And that was something I wanted to model. The rich musical uh, environment that we were supposed exposed to, um, through the concert chorale, the gospel choir, our band and orchestra, it was just something I wouldn't have traded for anything in the world. Our school was also tied to the Methodist church, so you were strongly encouraged to use whichever uh, denomination, faith, faith denomination you came from, but to have a relationship with the Lord. Um, that was a, a very important to me too, because I was brought up in the church. And so that is why I choose, chose to go to an HBCU. And you also got have to remember that our HBCUs often will give students an opportunity that they might not have to get an education at a, a state college or university because um, we may not have been exposed to that academic curriculum and qualify initially to go to that school or university. Well, we're going to take a short pause and we're going to come back and learn some more about your exciting journey through this life as a um, blind uh, student, as a blind adult, and a very successful woman. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I am a CFP practitioner and I happen to be blind. I rely on NFB Newsline to keep me current with Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times. Hoosiers can hear Indiana magazines, circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. back to this segment of the National Federation of the Blind News Line Indiana and Maryland. Upon your graduating from the university, uh, what 
occupation did you pursue? I pursued my passion, which was to be an elementary school teacher. And I interviewed for jobs for probably a year after graduating. Nobody in our county and even the surrounding counties was very much interested in hiring a blind student, I mean, blind teacher. So I finally found a teaching position at a private school in Maitland, which was 45 minutes from the house. And I taught um, primary grade students that had learning disabilities. And I did that for four and a half years. And then our school closed. I went once again, went back to um, our local public school systems and tried to find a teaching position. Mm, not much had really changed. So I was able to acquire an administrative position with the city of Orlando as an administrative receptionist in 1987, I believe. And I worked with the city of Orlando from 1987 to 2002. During that time, I was able to meet a member of the National Federation of the Blind on one of my travels to and from work. And they introduced me to the chapter and was able to meet other students, other individuals who were blind and vision impaired. And I became active in the chapter, served as its secretary, um, board member, um, vice president, and now I serve as chapter president. Um, while I worked at the city of Orlando, I was appointed by the governor to serve on the Florida Commission for the Transportation Disadvantaged, representing urban citizens in our state. And the commission um, is tasked with providing um, community transportation coordinators for each of our 67 counties to coordinate the um, transportation services, the door-to-door -door transportation that everyone um, uses in our community. So that was a wonderful opportunity. Also while working, I was able to serve on Easter Seals Project Action National Steering Committee and that allowed me to travel. Of course, being a member of the NFB, I was able to attend many of our um, state and national conventions. And I, once again, just wanna take a moment and encourage um, young people to get involved in the NFB, get involved in other organizations in your community. That's really where you're going to put the knowledge that you're going to gain from being um, educated, from uh, being a member of the National Federation of the Blind and serving other um, individuals who are blind. Being from an HBCU, my passion is diversity. It is to reach out to individuals who are African-American and may not have the same knowledge about resources and education and job opportunities that other individuals do. So that, and, and another thing that I do in our state affiliate is I chair our diversity and inclusion committee. And we work on a lot of different areas that are important to us, um, mental health, leadership, employment. When I first started with our, we didn't call it DEI at that time, it was Minority Concerns Committee. We just wanted to get one or two uh, individuals of color on the um, affiliate board. So we've certainly been able to do that and many other things. But without that experience from the HBCU, I don't know if this would have been possible. Without membership in the NFB, I'm not sure that I would have had that courage. And also I helped to create our county's um, disability advisory board for Orange, um, our, our county. And I also serve on our county's transportation disadvantaged local coordinating board. Mm. Well, you know, 
I would have to say, and Florence, I know you agree that the, her trials to triumphs are uh, fantastic and it took a lot of hard work and due diligence. And we're gonna take a short pause and come back with the conclusion of our show. Time flies by so fast, so stick with us. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. Wow, I scored a touchdown when I found sports on NFB Newsline. I enjoy reading TV guide listings on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are It's free. The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because low expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. Well, welcome to the conclusion of our show and Ms. Marilyn Baldwin from Florida. Again, thank you for being our very interesting, awesome guest today. And Marilyn, I just want to say thank you as well. And then for our viewing and listening audience, you can overcome trials and triumphs and some of the history that uh, Marilyn shared with us by uh, overcoming the strikes that she had against her as being uh, number one, a black blind woman and overcoming and becoming a successful person in the community, a uh, taxpaying citizen. Life is not guaranteed, but what you do with it is. So we just wanna say, join us next week for a brand new show and we'll look forward to hearing from Ms. Marilyn Baldwin again in the very near future. Thank you once again, Marilyn. Thank you for having me. And that concludes our show there. National Federation of the Blind, Newsline, Indiana. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want.